Chapter 15. <coughs> Genesis chapter 15 is where we're at today. I want to begin reading at verse number 7. Everybody got it? And it reads, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought you out of the uh, land of Ur and of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? In other words, how? How am I going to inherit it? And he said unto them, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcass, Abram drove them away. Listen to verse 11. And when the fowls came down from the carcass, Abram drove them away. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity I have to preach today. Jesus, I admit I need your help. I rebuke the spirits that try to fight against this message today. I ask for a special anointing, God, a yoke-breaking anointing in this house. I pray, God, that you'd save the lost, encourage those that are discouraged. I pray that you convict those that are in need of convicting. I ask you, God, to do a great work in this church. Send the spirit of encouragement, I pray. I pray that you'd send a spirit that would lift this heavy burden that seems to be prevailing in this service. I ask you, God, to do a great, awesome work in this place. I yield myself to you now. Come and have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I'm going to preach a message that I've titled, Chase the Vultures. Chase the Vultures. It's awesome in times of life that we uh, are promised a blessing. Abraham, or Abram at this time, had been told, hey, listen, your, 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 your seed's going to be like the stars. Man, look up. That's how many descendants you're going to have. What an awesome experience. I'm going to give you land here. And Abram goes, how in the world? <laughs> How in the world will I receive what you're telling me? How am I, how's this going to happen? He hears the voice of God and wonders. How can I be blessed like this? How can my family accomplish this? How can this be possible? Has anyone in this room felt that way? Yes. How in the world, God, can this be, happen? How will I ever see this come to pass? How will I ever experience this blessing? I know that at times God promises us are too big for us to imagine and they're more than we can comprehend. But we must be willing to hear His voice and move into His presence so that we can receive His blessings. Now listen to this. If we are promised a blessing, we cannot allow anyone to take our blessing. If we are promised a blessing, we cannot allow anybody to steal our right to the blessing. Let me explain that. Abram prepared a sacrifice. God says, here's what I want. I want this, I want that, I want this, and I want that. Abraham said, yes, sir. He took the sacrifice, divided them, laid them next to each other. I mean, they were laid lined up right next to each other down the altar. He had to prepare a sacrifice. And all of a sudden, he says... All right, God, it's all ready for you now. Just like God wanted it. It was the sacrifice that God had commanded. A sacrifice that would bless, a bless. A sacrifice that would be pleasing to God. A sacrifice that was required of God. And a sacrifice, that, listen, that would unlock the provision of God in his life. Sometimes in life you must understand that there will be a sacrifice required in order to unlock God's provision. I'm going to say that again. Because I'm not sure if I'm up here by myself or if I'm in a room with a hundred people. I don't know if you're listening. Sometimes in life, you must understand that there will be a sacrifice required in order yes. to unlock God's provision in your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So don't be afraid to sacrifice in order to unlock God's blessing in your life. I know that He wants to have a blessing in your life. And I know that He wants you to, to walk in the prosperity of God. But God expects a sacrifice in order, in order to unlock His provision. Provision. Now listen, from our text, Abraham prepared the sacrifice and laid it out before the Lord. But as the raw meat 
lay in the hot sun, all of a sudden the vultures began to swarm around. You've seen them out here on a hot summer day. Those big old birds begin to spread their wings and catch the draft, and they begin to fly in a circle around that sacrifice. You see, his blessing was tied to the sacrifice. Are you with me? These birds are now swarming in, and they begin to come down because they see a dinner waiting to happen. Abram sees a blessing about to get robbed. All of a sudden, he says, look, I'm going to fight off the birds that try to attack my sacrifice. You need to be aware this morning that your blessing is tied to a sacrifice, and there are vultures in your life that are going to try to steal your sacrifice. There are vultures in your life wanting to hinder your walk with God. There are vultures in your life wanting to keep you from fulfilling the very destiny of God's life. And you must be willing to say, I don't know about you, but I refuse to allow another thing come against me. I know Abram didn't use a whole broom, but it's the best thing I can get. He says, no, no, no. That sacrifice is tied to my blessing. You're not going to take my blessing. He began to swat those birds away and say, no, this is what God has commanded of me. And I refuse to allow you to take my blessing and rob my sacrifice. He takes that broom and the, or his stick or his wand or his rag and he says, no, no, no. I'm going to defend God commanding me to offer this sacrifice. It's connected to the blessing of my inheritance. It's connected to the land I'm going to get. It's connected to the family blessings and prosperity that my grandkids are going to live in. And devil, you're not going to have what God has promised in my life. Oh yeah. You better listen to me. Because some of you are in a place in your life right now. You've heard a promise from God. And you've received a word from God. And you've been told how you're going to be blessed. And you've been told how you're going to be used. And you've been told how God's going to speak through you. And you're going to unlock prison doors for folk. But for some reason you continue staying in the valley. And you continue staying down in the mud grubs. And every time you take one step forward for God, the devil knocks you about two steps backwards. You know what you better do? You better get that broom and say, devil, not now. I am going to be blessed no matter what. Come ready to fight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. How does this apply to you? Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a what? A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, you better understand there's vultures flying all around trying to destroy your sacrifice. Vultures are down and envy. Vultures of past hurt and addictions. Vultures of greed and bitterness and anger and lust and pride. You better say, no, no, no. Not now. My sacrifice will be received. My sacrifice will be honorable. My sacrifice will be reasonable. I will present my life. I know there's a lot of things trying to pull you back to the world. I know there's a lot of things trying to get your mind and get your family and get your blessing. But I declare today in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to chase some vultures away. I refuse for those things to eat my sacrifice. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. Amen. Psalms 27 verse 6 And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me Therefore will I offer in this tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing, yea I will sing praises yes. unto the Lord I don't know about you but I refuse to allow the devil to rob my praise I re Listen, my blessing is connected to my praise And I refuse to come in here knowing that God has brought me so far But yet I refuse to lift up a voice saying hallelujah Thank you God You better get Get that broom down and shake those cobwebs out of your head and say, not today, devil. I'm going to worship God with all my heart. My life's going to be a living sacrifice. I'm going to come into his presence with thanksgiving. I'm going to enter into his courts with praise. I'm going to bless the name of the Lord while I live. I refuse to allow you to steal my joy. Uh, you see, the enemy's coming in. He's trying to make all of us feel frustrated. I, for the last week, I've, since Monday, I've been praying against the spirit of frustration. I, I, you know, I'm a pretty transparent preacher. I've been praying. I, I've been battling three different spirits throughout this week. And I realize that I'm not the only one battling them. You are too. Yeah. We're frustrated. We're aggravated. We're, 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 we're pushed down. Listen, I'll tell you what's happening. The devil is yeah. mad yeah. and trying to rob yeah. the sacrifice. Yeah. And we better get a proof out and say, you're not going to Yeah. 
sacrifice. Yes, you better get as mad as I am with the devil because my frustration is now turning into not an anger against you or an anger against the church, but an anger against the devil. I'm so tired of him trying to stop what God is doing. And I a spear and a sword, but I come to him anointed in the name of the Lord and I will defend what God has given me. I will defend my call and I will defend my right to raise a voice of praise and honor. I will defend my right to go to heaven. I will, I will defend my right to live in peace. I will defend my right to walk in health. I will defend my right to walk in love and peace. Why? Because it is a gift of God and I refuse to allow the vultures to have my sin. You see, that, that sacrifice just looks like a bunch of raw meat to you. But it's connected to my blessing. Yes, amen. My sacrifice is connected to my blessing. Yes. Let's look at the story of Ris Rispa over in 2 Samuel. Y'all remember this story, 2 Samuel 21? Oh, Rispa. Listen to what she says. First of all, let me give you a little background. There's been a drought in the land or a famine in the land for three years. David is king now, and Saul has treated the Gibeonites horribly. And now the punishment of Saul is on the nation, is on the region. And then David says, what can I do, Gibeonites, to revenge the treatment of Saul against you? And they said, we don't want your gold, we don't want your silver, we want seven of Saul's sons to hang in the trees. We want a sacrifice to revenge the blood of our ancestors. We want a sacrifice to revenge what's happened in this land. Now look, verse 9. And he delivered unto them the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the hill before the Lord. And they fell all seven together, and were put to death in the days of the harvest, in the first days in the beginning of the barley harvest. Now listen, that's the early April. And Rispa, the daughter of Ahi, took the sackcloth and spread it upon her rock, or upon the rock, from the beginning of the harvest until the water dropped upon them out of heaven. Listen to what she did. And she suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beast of the field by night. Get this picture. There's been a famine in the land for three years. Now listen, Rispa. Two of her sons were hanged that day out of the seven. Rispa was one of Saul's concubines. One of Saul's maids that bore him sons. Two of her sons are hanging in the trees, dead, as a sacrifice to the land. She had every right to be anger, angry. She had every right to be bitter. But evidently she saw something there that we didn't see. You see, I know what she did see. She saw her encouragement dying in the tree. Amen. She saw her future dying in the tree. She saw her hope dying in the tree. But evidently, she knew God had something in store. And listen, this is going to get deep now. She knew that there had to be a sacrifice in order to bless the land. Amen. Stay with me now. She realized that for the famine to be broken, there had to be a sacrifice. And two of her sons were part of the seven. She's hurt. She's grieving. She's mourning. From late April to early October, she watches around the clock. She lays her mourning cloth out upon the rock. And every time a bird tried to come land upon those dead bodies, she got her a broom from my side of the story. She got her a broom and said, you're not going to eat the flesh of my boys. At night, the wild beasts would come lurking in, growling. She'd take and chase them away. She realized that when the drop of rain fell upon those bodies, that they would deteriorate and fall to the ground and the sacrifice would be complete. And listen, and the whole region would be blessed because of the sacrifice. In other words, the blessing not just of her family, the blessing of the region was tied to the sacrifice hanging in the tree. Yeah. You with me? Amen. The entire area, the famine would be broken because in her life,
wife, she was willing to say, not one bird's going to eat the flesh of my sons. Not one animal's going to steal my sacrifice. I wonder today, how many of you would sit here going, I feel vindicated. I feel vindicated. Now, let the land starve. I feel vindicated. They're hanging my two sons. I will not do anything but curse them. But not, not Rispa. Rispa said, I'm going to fight for the region now. I realize my sons are dying, but I'm going to fight for the region. I'm going to stand with a broom and I'm going to chase off the wild beast that tries to attack my family because I want God's sacrifice to be completed because when the rain fell the blessing came when the rain fell the power came the curse was broken some of you this morning need to be willing to surrender everything to God and realize Jesus Christ was also a sacrifice hung on an old tree and died extended from heaven to earth and when his body went into the ground the curse was broken and three days later he came out of the grave triumphantly thank God if somebody was willing to chase the vultures away. Amen. Thank you. have got to be willing to chase the wild beast in the nights and the birds by the day in order for God's blessings to be released. Sometimes you've got to fight while you're grieving. Sometimes you've got to fight while you're angry. Sometimes you've got to fight during times of loneliness. Sometimes you've got to fight during your depression. Sometimes you've got to fight during your frustration. I understand that Rispa had every reason to curse God, but instead she chased the vultures. I understand you've got every reason this morning to curse God, but I'm telling you this morning it's time to chase the vultures. I know you've got every reason and every excuse why not to serve the Lord, but I'm giving you a chance to chase the vultures. I know you've got every reason to leave church with your head tucked down and your tail between your legs, but I'm here to tell you it's time to chase the vultures. It's not time to go off in the highways and leave something here. It's time time to say, I will defend my sons and my daughters. I'll defend my blessings. I'll defend the region. Because our sacrifice is tied to our blessings. I know you're hurting. I know you're tired of fighting. I know you've been dealing with anger. You've been dealing with all kinds of problems and addictions in your life. And maybe you've been mistreated. Maybe your future looks dead. And maybe your prosperity looks gone. And maybe your sons are going to be the ones that were able to provide for your retirement. Now they're dead and gone. It doesn't matter. You've been willing to fight because the rain is coming. That latter rain's about to pour out. And at that time, the curse will be broken. Some of you've got to endure a dry time in order to make it to a wet season. But I'm here to tell you, if you'll fight those vultures away, God's going to send a rain. Greater is the rain that's coming on this church than it was in the beginning. You better hold your head up, spray your shoulders back, and chase some vultures away. Are you with me this morning? Man. You've got to be willing to say, I'm not going to let the devil take my sacrifice. God's given me the idea. God's given me the calling. God's given me the sacrifice, and I will not allow him to destroy it. Amen. Stand guard and tell the devil, you're not taking mine. Mm -mm. You're not taking mine. You're not taking mine. Somebody say that. You're not taking mine. You're not taking my sacrifice. You're not taking my blessing. You're not taking my deliverance. You're not taking my hope. You're not taking my peace. I've laid a sacrifice. I will receive my inheritance. You're not taking mine. I'm going to walk in love and power. I'm going to walk debt free. You're not taking mine. My children will serve you. My grandkids will be delivered. You're not taking mine. I'm going to chase the Lord. got to be willing to chase the vultures. But brother Chris, you don't know what I've lived through. Oh, I don't know why. Maybe I don't. But I know one thing. The man that died on the cross and rose from the grave, he knows what you've been through. And he's chased some vultures away. He's already laid out the sacrifice. Now you need to begin to know, devil, you're not having my, you're not getting my peace and my joy in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to stand flat-footed and declare, today I will serve the Lord with all my heart. Chase the vultures, chase the vultures, chase the vultures in the name of Jesus. But you got to be willing to watch for the small things. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Matthew 10, 16, 17, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves, but be aware of men. For they will deliver. Be aware of who? Men. For, be aware of who? Human. Men. For they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in the synagogues. Yeah. Beware. Thank you. Beware of the little things. Yes. I'm going to chase some vultures. My blessing is tied to that sacrifice. Amen. 
The blessing of this region is tied to the sacrifice of this church. Yes. I want to say that again. Lord, I'm going in a different direction, Sister Sandra. I ain't even thought about it, but I'm about to go this way now. You need to understand something. Oh, do I even want to say what I'm about to say? I'm not saying anything. Because what you need to understand is, I have, dear Lord, help me. The church on the hill, you know why it's important? That we get the money and we fight for that church? Because I believe it's going to unlock another whole area of souls being saved for the kingdom of God. I believe it will not just, it's not to glorify us. We don't need us. We, if we can fit people in this building, let's fit people in this building. But I'm here to tell you, I just feel like our sacrifice is going to bless the region. Our sacrifice is going to bless the region. And it's so easy for that frustration vulture to come in. It's so easy for to say, I'll forget it. We don't even, we, we're missing about 40 people this morning. Forget it. Let's just be happy with the same church oh, no. No. Oh, people are so tired of giving we ain't got nothing else to give let's forget about the land let's forget about the church listen our sacrifice is tied to the blessing of this entire region oh my god I feel the Holy Ghost what I want you to understand is remember I told you months ago God told me stop praying for the community and start praying for what the region and at that I changed my prayer life to say, God, win the region, bless the region. Listen, and now I'm at a point in my life that happened just now. The revelation is the way we sacrifice will not only change our church, it will change the entire region. Don't you let the vultures get you so frustrated and down in the dumps that you forget to sacrifice. Don't you dare say, okay, I'm going to give up. I will confess I said that two times this week. Forget it. Forget it. We'll be happy in the church we'll have. Why we, we ain't paid the money on the land? Let's not even get it. Jesus. I told my wife this morning, why are we wasting money on that land up there? Jesus. Get away, vulture, in the name of Jesus Christ. Get away, vulture, in the name of Jesus Christ. God has commanded and promised a blessing on this church. Haggai chapter 2. The end of this church will be better than the beginning of this church. Get away, devil, in the name of Jesus Christ. I refuse to allow you to rob my sacrifice. I come as a prophet, anointed of the Lord. You will not steal the sacrifice. This region will be blessed. I declare it in Jesus' name. Can somebody give God praise? some vultures. You better fight some vultures. I refuse to allow the power of God to, to be diminished because the devil's trying to steal my sacrifice. I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. I will walk in the victory and the peace of God. Amen. Sister Sandra, if you'll come. Glory to God. Amen. Who is left among you who saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of as it is as nothing? Listen to verse 4. Be ye strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, saith the Lord. And work. Everybody say work. 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 And I am the Lord that is with you, saith the Lord of hosts. Yeah. According to the word that I have covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. Amen. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory, Hallelujah. saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord yes. of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. We better get ready to fight some vultures. Amen. Amen. Stand with me. Yes. Better get ready to fight some vultures. He wants to steal your sacrifice. Oh, he 
likes to come in Amen. when we're tired and sleepy. He likes to come in when we're feeling lonely and discouraged and rob the sacrifice. Oh, as long as he messes with the sacrifice and not me, I'm okay. <coughs> That's tied to my blessing. That's tied to my hope. That sacrifice is tied to my deliverance. The region's going to be blessed because of this sacrifice. Be careful. There's wolves out there. There are vultures flying around. You better get you a stick. And in the name of Jesus, let's fight off some vultures. Amen? Let's see if I can figure out how to have an altar call that. First of all, if you're in this church and you're not saved,